What's up, everybody? It's Buffalo Ben 15 Golf back at it again. And today we're back at the simulator. We're going to play some more simulator golf for you. Uh, today we're going to be playing the Teeth of the Dog Golf Links in Casa de Campo, Dominican Republic. Uh, just short of 6,800 yards. It looked like a really nice course, so I decided to give it a shot. I'm pretty sure I've seen this uh, course played on TV before. Uh, I believe. Uh, one of the seasons of the big break um, which is like a golf reality show uh, was played here um, featuring Blair O'Neill uh, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of her before she's like a she co-hosts School of Golf with Martin Hall on the Golf Channel um, the big break is also how one of my favorite golfers Tommy Two Gloves Ganey uh, Kind of came to prominence. Uh, I'm pretty sure he's playing on the Corn Ferry Tour now. Uh, he won on the Corn Ferry Tour last year, so I thought, hey, this golf course is on here. Decided to give it a shot, see if I can uh, shoot anywhere close on then to what the pros shoot, you know, because, I mean, I like to think that I could do it. So I uh, hit a pretty good tee shot on this hole. My second shot wasn't quite as good. Um, hitting out of the so-called bunker, because there's no sand in this room that I can use. Um, not bad on the green. Let's start off with a par, come on. That's what I want to do more this season, start off better. I can usually finish the round pretty well, but I need to start it better if I want to break 80 more often. And, um, you know, I remember this one course that I played in late November uh, called Maple Lane. It's in Sterling Heights, and um, for those of you who've played there before, it's not a good course, but um, I remember I got a quadruple bogey eight on the second hole and um i'm planning to go back and play that course once the course is open after winter's over and um course vlog there and see if i can do substantially better than that you know as much as I would rather play another course, um, I need to go back and do better than a quadruple bogey eight on the second hole. Come on. Like, because that's a card killer. Like, I don't care how good you're playing. That absolutely destroys your round. There's going to be zero tolerance for triple bogeys. Um, little to no tolerance for double bogeys this year. One double per round is about the worst it's going to get. I would like to get to the point where bogey's the worst that I do, but, you know, something crazy will happen, maybe hit a really good shot and I can't find it. Um, wait a second. And he finds the hole in the chip shot. Saves par after the penalty. No big deal, right? <laughs> um, anyways, uh, yeah, as I was saying, I'm going to go back to that one course and see if I can do any better than an eight on the second hole. Because, yeah, I'm not going to let myself live with that. Um you know uh all right so off to the third hole now uh i believe this is par five yeah pop this one up a little bit not as bad as some of the other ones but um i don't know why the pop flies have been so abundant the last couple rounds like at spyglass i had a lot of a lot of them at Beth Page. I had a couple. Um, but definitely going to try to fix those. Because, um, 
mean, can't have those. As much as they usually go straight, they don't go far at all. And some of the courses that I play, some, some of the longer holes, you might as well scratch off the par four and make it a par five after a shot like that, or a par three to, into a par four. Um, and uh, I feel like sometimes that's just what happens in golf. You know, like sometimes you just have to face that kind of... Uh, fact of taking your medicine a little bit that's kind of how I got an eight on that one hole that was off camera at uh, that one course I was taught I was telling you about uh, I think that's what I also need to work on this year maybe just taking my medicine a little bit more and not trying to hit the hero shot because I mean Yes, this is a YouTube channel. Of course, I'm going to be a little aggressive because I want you guys to see me hit good shots. Um, but at the same time, I need to look at the big picture of like, okay, how's this going to affect uh, the team? How's this going to affect my overall average later if I mess up um, and stuff like that? Because I don't want eight on holes. I don't want those card killers. Who does? Um, and speaking of the team, uh, it is confirmed that we are going to have a season this year. COVID is not um, going to stop us this year. Um, thank goodness, to be honest. I was heartbroken after last season got taken away. Um, but uh, with that in mind, I probably won't be able to post all that much. That was a good putt. Um, between early April and late May, um, which is when our season is the months of April and May, June if we make states, um, which our coach is t telling us that... Um, we have a good shot at making states this year. Uh, our team looks pretty good, he said. Um, we've got this one junior who shoots us about a 78 average. We got a uh, senior, uh, same grade as me, who shoots about 83, 84, about where I'm at. Um, we got another senior who shoots about 78, 79 average. Um, so, usually to make states, a score like 320, because the top four scores count, we play 18 holes, uh, will usually do it. A 320 or better, and you got a good shot. Um, so, breaking 80 is imperative there, um, which I'm hoping to do a lot more this season. But like I said there's probably going to be long stretches where I don't post anything other than possibly rounds on the weekends where me and dad play. Uh, but that's about it, to be honest. Uh, I will try to document some of the tryout tournament. There's a good chance that I'll make the team, but there's no guarantees. Um, I'm not going to act like there are any guarantees, especially if I have holes like that, which you just saw. Um, three putt after a drop shot. Yeah, that's not going to fly today or this year. Um, but as I was saying, I'm going to try to document some of the tryout tournament and, uh, some of our practice rounds if my coach will let me um i tried to film some stuff for the youtube channel that i deleted later uh last year with the tryout tournament he seemed to be cool with it he didn't he didn't seem bothered by it uh so you know 
maybe I'll film a few drives here and there. Uh, they might not be the best angles because I, I, I'm not going to carry out a tripod to the T and be a big hot shot when I'm trying to make a golf team for a school, you know, like this isn't, this isn't a golf outing where you drink like eight beers in an hour or something like that. So I'll try to film some six, holes, six, really. probably not Watch every it. hole just because I mean, I can't there. Th number one, I, I just probably wouldn't uh, be focusing on my golf enough. And number two, just uh, I don't want to make the team mad, you know, because I mean, the team seemed to like it. The team, the team seemed to be into my uh, YouTube channel at the time, which I ended up not making until this November. Sorry about that, guys. For those of you who I told that I had a YouTube channel that I never made until later on in the year. <laughs> but hey, it's here now, right? So... Uh, I suppose we're good to go now. Not a great tee shot just now, but... Uh, hitting about a 40 yard pitch shot these are the kind of shots that i'm gonna need you know these on the sh on the par fives this is about what i'm gonna have in um at least on the shorter par fives um gotta do well with those because you know those par fives often those are the best chances to get birdie on the course you know e even after a bad shot on a par five you still got a chance to make a decent score um which is definitely not nearly as true for the par fours and the par threes um i still managed to make par there though that was a good shot off to uh, a shorter par four now uh, about 360 yards um as you can see i don't have driver in hand another thing i'm going to try to do this season probably n not use driver quite as much on tee shots uh you know on the longer ones, I'm probably going to have to because I don't want to have a wood and do a green on a par four. Um, who does? But if it's if the par four is like below 380, I'm not going to need driver, you know, because I can hit a 233 wood or a 225 wood and still have a nine or an eight iron in. As you can see here, I'm using probably nine iron from how long? It looked like about 155, 160. Yeah, I believe I believe I used a nine iron here. But yeah, but it was a 225 wood and uh, 169 iron, and boom, on a 380 par four, there you go. Guess what that gets you. what you just saw so i'm gonna try to do that a little bit more often because my eight iron and my nine iron are pretty comfortable clubs for me i usually do really well with those why not uh be more oriented towards them throughout my rounds i mean that'd be kind of a stupid move not to be all right Everything's going to the left a little bit, I'm noticing. Clear the bunker, at least. Not like it would have mattered, because there's no rough or sand in this room that I can hit off of. Hit this one pretty good. Uh, apparently not, judging by my reaction. Um, yeah, I just kind of... Yeah, again, I just pulled it. Um, that kind of thing. 
Um, you know, I'm not seeing a lot of shots that go considerably right, though. You know, you never want to have a two-way miss. Uh, always want to be one-way miss. Um, hit a pretty good shot here, though. Oh, yeah. Really nice shot there. Right onto the heart of the green. Greens and regulation are another thing that are going to be um, really important this year. That's going to give me more chances at birdie. Um, only very rarely will I get bogey, you know, because three putt. I don't get that many of those. I get more one putts than I get three putts, at least today, right? There's another birdie. Um, I know it's not real golf, but, you know, February in Michigan, what are you going to do? As I'm filming this, uh, it's going to be like in the high 30s, a couple days in the low 40s next week. Um, so, hopefully by mid-March, the courses will be open. Because our tryouts are scheduled to be on March 15th, March 16th, I believe. So that is what we're shooting for. But, you know, it's Michigan. We might get pushed back a week or a couple weeks. Hopefully not. Um, the hope is that all the snow will be gone by then. And uh, it'll be finally nice enough to play. So, I'm really uh, hoping that uh, I can play golf outside in the next two or three weeks because I'll tell you what, I have been refraining from scratching that golf itch for a while now. I'm I'm starting to get I'm starting to get a little bit irritated, as many avid golfers out there are, that live in the northern half of the United States. Um, another slight pop up here, not terrible. Um, I seem to be able to hit the driver decent. Um, these, uh, apart from the pop-ups, I've been hitting it okay today. You know, these rounds, as much as I want to shoot well on these little simulator rounds that I do, um, it's, this is more about me, like, from my perspective, this is more about me trying to um, just figure out clubs, figure out my swing, figure out what works. Um, right now, I seem to have a big problem with hooking my woods. Um, not my not my driver, but my fairway woods. Um, so, got to work on those. Um, I think part of it is I'm not getting them high enough. I'm definitely going to work on that. And I know it's like a mat. I know it's like an AstroTurf mat and not real grass, but still, um, it feels like I could definitely do better. Um, you know, these mats are quite misleading sometimes. Like whenever you chunk it, it's not, you, you don't, you can't like really tell how badly you chunked it. Because sometimes when you chunk the ball, it's almost it's almost uh, no damage done. Like if it'll be like five yards shorter than you thought it would be, and it'll still be on the green or on the fairway or wherever. But sometimes you chunk it and it takes a hundred yards off the off your shot. Um, you know, so with these mats, you can't really tell because you know they're kind of bouncy and stuff. Um, hopefully, once I go back to actually golfing for real, I'll be able to adjust quickly. I really am hoping that the, 
the tryout tournament will be like maybe a week after the course is open because I want to get a practice round in before then. Um, like I said, I, I'm going to go back to that one course basically first thing um, when the course is open again. Because, you know, I, I feel like I just need to figure my swing out a little bit more before I'm ready to play competitive golf again. You know, being taking an entire year off. Um, as I was so rudely interrupted, <laughs> I shouldn't be mad because if I make putts like that, oh man, you bet I'm going to shoot lower scores. Um, but as I was saying, just taking an entire year off is really made me just... And, and not playing competitive golf. And, I mean, for those of you who don't play competitive golf, you would think, oh, it's no different than regular golf, just recreational golf. It is. It's, it is different. There is a different um, level of thinking that goes into each shot. There's a difference in the way you play depending on who you play with. Um, and, you know, I just haven't been able to experience that in, in, for a long time now. And I feel like before I play competitive golf again, I need to have, like, a practice round where I see where everything's at, um, like, on real conditions. Because this is not, this is, I mean, as much as it's, a nice room temperature in here it's not that's not going to be what it is outside um like i'm i'm gonna need to deal with the elements i'm gonna need to figure out how to do that um i mean i feel like i'm decent in bad weather but we have a lot of of cold weather in april um may is not that bad but April some of some of the rounds that we play with the team are ugly like 45 degrees windy sometimes rainy sometimes we'll play in anything but that doesn't mean we have to like it all right come on make this Hot. Mm. Can't be blown at that far by, but I mean, stayed inside six feet. I have the gimmies on six feet. I feel like that's fair just because it's about six feet to the screen from where I'm putting from. Um, that's, that's the way I see it. All right. Been playing really good. Lots of pars, lots of birdies. Um, hopefully around this good can translate in real life. Obviously there's no rough to hit off of, no sand to hit off of and stuff. Um, obviously the temperature would be different, the wind would be different. So, I try to think that in real life my score would be about 5 to 10% higher. Um then on the simulator like around that's 80 would on this would be maybe 85 in real life oh boy another birdie we made it back to even par guys i don't know and maybe a round of 72 would be like 77 or 78 in real life um i'm not gonna get mad at that like that's good it's really good. Um, all right, another part three. Short irons have 
kind of been on and off today. Some of them have been really good. Some of them haven't been good at all. This one's a really good shot. I did really good with this one. Oh, uh, sorry about that. Yeah. That's what you want. 20 feet to go. Never going to get mad at that. Come on, make it. Oh, it just slides by on the left side. All right. Par's fine. Par's absolutely fine, uh, however. I'll make that one. Missed that one, but I don't make the other one, really. All right. Off to a medium-length par four, 393 yards, I believe. Pretty good drive. Just a little bit off to the right, and maybe like five-yard fade. That's never going to be bad, though. Never gonna get mad at that. Yeah, pretty good, pretty good. Off to another gap wedge here. I don't remember if I chunked this or not, or just didn't take the club as far back as I needed to. Um, yeah, but I come up short a little bit. If this is the worst it's going to get, though, like just greenside chip shots, that's fine. Especially if I can hit shots like that that you just saw. Yeah. The wedges have been great today. They sure have been. Off to the last hole. We are even par. And my goodness. 422 yards. Usually I'd use driver here, but as you can see, I do not have driver in hand. There's a bunker about 250 out. And the fairway after that is like less than 10 yards wide. So I hit a five wood. I smoke it. Almost get it to the bunker anyway. Oh man. Hit a really, really good shot here. Boom worthy for sure. With a 5 wood 250, oh yeah. Wouldn't it be awesome if I could do that in real life? I mean, if that's actually how far that ball would have just gone, awesome. Awesome stuff. And that's another reason why I want to shoot a practice round before tryout tournaments because I just want to see how far everything is going. You know what I mean? I feel like I that would be a really smart to just go out go out there and gauge, okay, how far are my yardages going? Um are they substantially more than last year or are they not? And we're in for par. Look at that guys. Even par 72. I should have been talking a lot more about the round, but, you know, I just wanted to update you guys on stuff. So there well, you go. Folks, Thanks for watching, guys. you have it. Teeth of the Dog and Dominican Republic. 38 on the front. Triple, a bogey, and two birdies. And all pars and birdies on the back. 34. Ties my best ever real life round of golf. Thanks for watching, everyone.